So I'm going to have a go at trying to prep this Peronoceros. So you can see the edge of the ammonite here. It's a bit of an unusual one because you can see these little spines on the outside. Um, so it's currently in a big block of shell. My goal with my little Dremel is to clear down on this side, get down towards the middle, see if the middle's there. Uh, if the middle's still there, then I'll take some nicer, finer tools to try and prep it properly. Uh, the middle's not, I'll just stop. Um, but that's my goal. Uh, we'll see how we can turn this into a, a time lapse. Uh, I'm not planning to record goal at this speed, mostly because the noise of the machine is pretty frustrating. So we will see how it goes and uh, see what we can do. So just stopped for a second, uh, just was exposing some lines up here, I uh, was just checking what they were, making sure there was nothing exciting and important. Um, got quite a bit off already, a little concerned if we're looking at the middle, that middle doesn't look there already, um, but we'll reserve judgment to get all the way down to it. So let's get back. So yeah, looks like the middle's gone, uh, still using the big tool, uh, the big needle on top of my Dremel. I'm going to just change it out to a slightly smaller one and see if I can tidy off the edges uh, and then give it a bit of an explore in the middle, but uh, that'll still be a little bit of time just to make sure there's nothing more there. So pretty much as feared. Uh, middle's gone, uh, which happens quite a lot with ammonites. They're basically air-filled chambers, uh, and if you consider them getting put to the bottom of the floor, ocean floor, uh, lots and lots of rock and sediment going on top of them, they slowly compress. So we tend to not find 3D preserved ones unless they're in uh, nodules like the ones that we have over here. So they come in a nodule and this protects them from collapsing. Um, so ones like this, if we look on the side, you can actually see here where it's completely collapsed uh, from the pressure uh, and in the middle there's just nothing left so it's a shame but so it is nothing on this so we'll just leave that there and uh, that'll go into the garden and we'll have a go with some of the ones that are slightly better preserved so because that last one's a bust we're gonna have a look at one of the decks I've been working on so the nodules that we get on the Yorkshire coast tend to be these limestone covered uh, nodules often heavily pyritized, so there's lots of iron pyrite in there, makes them a bit tough to get off with the Dremel. But they come like this, uh, each side usually has a cap, I've been removing this side, which is why it looks like this now. Um, so you can see these white lines, these scratch marks, this is where the Dremel tool has been going across and slowly been chipping off all the material. So all the stuff that you see that comes off here, that's coming off of this. Uh, you might just about see that there's bits of ammonite showing through so I'm down pretty close to the ammonite all the way around now so I've gone from the really big tool down to a little sharp pointed tool from Zoic uh, and I'm going to just give this one a go at trying to tidy that up for you guys uh, now. So mm, that's most of the next one now revealed. Not perfect, you can see I called it a few times. Uh, but the shell's looking pretty alright, so we'll keep going. We'll clear off the corners here and then work on to the next layers inside. So you can see we're getting there, the edge is now exposed all the way around, the next uh, one in, the next ring in, we're getting there, next coil. So keep going, keep working this one, then there'll be another couple probably, I'd say two, maybe three more inside that and they start getting really small. So we're going to start having to get really careful, can't do what we're doing here and accidentally catching it. Um, so we'll just keep working to see what we can do.
So you can see we're getting down to the middle. It needs a bit of a clean up. I'm gonna take a quick break to go stretch back, shoulders and everything, uh, and then come back and see if we can get that middle down to a little point finish. And then we'll give it another good clean and show you what it looks like at the end. So, somewhat annoyingly, I'm over two for complete ammonites. That one's middle's gone as well. Uh, but at least it gives you an idea of how it works, uh, how you expose uh, most of an ammonite, if not the middle, uh, from the rock. So, it did look like that. Now it looks like that. I'll give this one more quick scrub with uh, a brush, clean off all the last bits of dust, and then uh, put some varnish on it to make it look a bit tidier. So what I've got here is a fairly thick solution of uh, consolidant. It's uh, B72, it's paraloid, uh, also known as Movitol. Uh, that's sort of a gluey uh, substance held together with acetone. Um, so what it will do is act very much like nail polish. As you put it on, it'll spread around, it'll hold things in place. Uh, it'll also give it a nice shiny gloss, which is the finish we're going for today on this ammonite. Um, so you'll see that it will hold that color uh, as opposed to the bits that have started to dry out which then look a bit gray and a bit drab um, so a little bit of art to end my day Uh, and there you have it. That's one ammonite prepped. At least as prepped as it can be on this side. I'm not going to bother with the other side. Uh, There's just no point. So leave it there.